Uh, will you be rooting for Tiger when he plays at the Masters? I don't know enough about golf to root. Yeah. <laughs> Although, I will I. You'll watch it. You've no, said that. I, I, you know what? Definitely I, watch it. I, I take it back. I'm not being honest. I'm not being honest. I, that was a that that answer was a lie. You don't know about golf? No, I no. I have an answer to that. Yes, I'll be rooting for Tiger. Oh. Okay. I, yeah. I mean, I don't know why I said that. Yes, I'll be rooting for Tiger. Um, and I'll be I'll, I'll be honest with you about why. I, and this is maybe it's a little sick, <laughs> but I do. I, I am just fascinated by the notion that people can quickly forgive if somebody has a hit record, has a you know winning streak, has a something, that winning becomes... that I want to see that happen. Because in, in just in a pure sociological way, I find it fascinating. And I want to watch that because it's so interesting to watch that I really do believe that if he wins the Masters, this just like a wave going back out to sea goes away, or yeah. at least goes away in large part. And I do believe that's going to happen. I mean, and, and, and yeah, I guess I am rooting for him on that level. I'm just sociologically, and I mean that, really interested in that. I, and yeah. It's a phenomenon. I agree. I uh, I only hope Tiger plays because I can't watch golf without Tiger Woods playing. It's yeah. really boring. Oh. Like, I don't know how. They remember there was this whole thing about Accenture, and there's a tournament going on this weekend, and Tiger was going to inter- interrupt it. We just said Accenture like six times in the last hour. Like, oh. that, I think it's exactly what you wanted because no one was watching the tournament until now. And now I want to turn it on. My understanding is the viewership plummeted after Tiger left. Yeah, just, I mean, you know. Have you heard anything more about Sandra Bullock and that cute little dog she tried to help? No, we actually put calls in. I talked to Jesse James He did, this morning. He didn't know anything about it. Uh, it does, so we don't know if the dog made it? He, we don't know what, whether she caught the dog or uh, didn't catch the dog. We better work on that. Cinnabon... It had a rough time. Cinnabon lost 23 pounds, it turns out, uh, and is at the vet for the next couple of days and is going to have an IV attached to her because she has a lung infection. And it doesn't sound like she got the best of care, to say the least, uh, while she was missing. Well, unclear, but this dog was... Not treated particularly well. But she, well. she was gone for dog was star- thirty days. Dog right? was How starved. Long? Yeah, but I, if if she was on the streets dog, all the time, she well, wouldn't have had any food. Unclear where this dog was. Oh, because the lady had this dog. dog this, well, I, I don't huh. know about the lady. This dog was not on the streets for thirty days. Huh? This dog was not. First of all, if the dog was on the streets of Long Beach for thirty days of pit bull, we would know it. That's true. Yeah, it, it, this dog was not. That's weird. This dog, I mean, so somebody brought the dog in, possibly, but I'm didn't treat you, it well. I, I, I'm not going to go more into it than I. Uh, huh. Something is odd about this thing, but at least Jesse said that Cinnabon should be okay. Okay. But a little more trouble than he thought. You know, it's just it's going to be a little bit of time. <laughs> this is a question for you. Is Gloria on a real attorney? Yes. <laughs> She is. I, I, Listen, she seems Gloria has sure done, makes it Gloria already, Gloria already has done some really good things in certain areas of the law in L.A. I mean, in terms of civil rights, she absolutely has. But then all of a sudden, stuff like this, which in terms of the law, let me just say, in terms of <laughs> entertainment value, I love it. It's priceless. I mean, it's just priceless. I think I can say this. I can't say too much, but I can say it seems that during this whole Tiger thing, she's kind of gone on the other side of the line. Like, I don't know. I mean, maybe her own lines, but I don't, I don't know. know. I mean, she represents like five of the mistresses, and she just keeps taking them on. Even the, the last couple, like Jocelyn James, that probably never even saw Tiger Woods, maybe was an escort in Vegas for one night. But it's like, and then all of a sudden, they've got a really powerful attorney. Like, it doesn't make any sense to me. I, know. It's I like, don't know. And what, what are their damages anyway, by the way? What do they need a lawyer for? What exactly did... What exactly does this chick need a lawyer, Glory Allred, for? Well, if you're a porn star and you're an escort in Vegas and he takes you out, you're telling me that you didn't expect him to never talk to you again? But when does <laughs> never... he loves you? When does breaking up with somebody, whether you're married or single, and when you're married it would seem to be a little more understandable, but when does breaking up with somebody um, constitute anything that requires a lawyer's services? Because actually there used to be a cause of action in many states in the 1800s called breach of promise that if somebody proposed to somebody else and you said I will marry you 
and then all of a sudden, you know, the person makes plans and all of this other stuff, and then the person pulls the plug on the marriage, mm -hmm. you could actually sue him for breach of promise. That's oh. been eliminated in every state. <laughs> uh, I believe every state. You can't sue for breach of promise. It's stupid, okay? <laughs> yeah. That people break up, okay? You can't sue somebody because I don't love you anymore. I'm sorry, but you can't sue for that. It's like, and when you're a porn star and the person is married, it's like, Lady, you don't really have a legal claim here. But he here. loves me. And he so left me. What? <laughs> He's got a bad name for porn stars. Yeah. That's the thing. I know. So that's what I was thinking. I mean, like, it sounds on, like a, re a really not fun what porn star. What do you need a lawyer for? Okay. Do restraining orders mean absolutely nothing when Adrena Stalker is able to go to her house and knock on her front door? I mean, that's a very good question. The reason people get restraining orders is that without one, you have to prosecute the person, prove guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. It can take months and even longer than that sometimes. They have to go through an arraignment, a preliminary hearing, the whole works. And that can be such a long period of time that something bad could happen to the victim. When you get a restraining order, what it means is if you can prove that it was violated, if you can prove somebody got within 500 yards, you can automatically cite them for contempt of court and throw them in jail. Okay? And that's the advantage of a restraining order. It short circuits things, and that's why people get them. That said, the question is, is somebody really going to follow a restraining order when they're out of their mind? Or they're just mentally unstable? And that's the problem with a lot of stalkers, harassers, obsessed fans, things like that, is that these are people that are so overpowered by the celebrity they're focused on that it's bigger to them than some legal document. Well, and, and obviously they're talking about Audrina and what happened just now, yeah. the arrest of this Lauren character. I think that the other thing that Harvey's talking about is, is it says on the restraining order you can't stalk, harass, threaten. So when he was arrested today, he was arrested for felony stalking. The bail is $160,000. I think the other thing is they know once they do arrest him, which, like you said, they can right away, right. he's going to stay there a while so they can figure out what, what is going on. Yeah, Apparently they, he had a weapon on him. I mean, this is something that they can... And eventually he gets out again. I mean, it's, it's a whole... Very dangerous situation for a lot of celebrities. I mean, it is, and for anybody, for anybody who has a stalker, by definition, they're people who are unstable. Right. Um, how did Tiger get in and out of the press conference? You know, it's funny. We were waiting for him. We had our live stream there outside, and all of a sudden, he was inside. I don't know if he went a back way. I know there was a helicopter that we saw take off and come back. I have no idea how he did get in and out of there. Um, but you know, and then we saw him come in the motorcade, like Gary said, just now back to his house. And it takes about an hour drive to get from there to Tiger's house. I'm he guessing he drove. He could he could have taken the boat. He could have an hour and forty five minutes. Yeah, he he does have water access from his house to where he was, so he could have done that. We don't really know. But we never saw him. We never saw him. Uh,